DCS crew, what is up? It's Carlos back at it again today with another installment in the Office EDC knife game. So, um, you know, as most of you will know, uh, and even people who are not really into the EDC community and carrying knives, if you're going to have something for the office, a really easy go-to, uh, you know, to have something that seems to be HR friendly, uh, and is going to do everything that you need it to do with regards to EDC tasks is the tried, true, tested Victorinox Swiss Army Multi-Tool. Now, this one in particular is an ALOX edition, meaning that it is a, has a steel frame. Uh, typically, they'll have a Celador frame like this guy right here. Uh, this is a, uh, a Tinker, and this is an ALOX Tinker as well. Um, the difference between the two, in all honesty, is that you're, this one is actually going to have a... Uh, a screwdriver input right here and this one will not uh, it's just it's uh, designed in a way to where it's too flat to be able to, to have one of those but if you've been in the knife game long enough you'll know that just looking at the inox steel <laughs> is going to dull the blade and if you don't have something to be able to sharpen it then and there or if you have something to sharpen it but it really can't get to this thin of a grind and be able to put it a nice edge you're going to want to look for something different you're going to want to look for a dedicated knife for uh, office related EDC tasks. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give you one knife a day from Monday through Friday that you can use for your EDC tasks. And what I'm also gonna do is I'm gonna start from budget all the way up to, I guess, higher end design. Um, you know, it's it, these are all gonna be production knives. In some form or fashion, you're going to be able to get uh, these knives. Some of them are going to have some upgrades. Some of them will not. I will discuss them. And there is a couple of things that I that I do want you to know. So stay tuned. We're going to go ahead and go over five knives for the office uh, that I think that would be very beneficial to most people that are looking for something anywhere from budget to high end. So stay tuned. <laughs> Guys, welcome back and thank you so much for joining me on this video. So I really like this and it seems to be that you all really like this as well. Thank you so much for being a sub. And if you aren't already and you just happen to randomly peruse through YouTube to find this uh, channel, please consider subscribing to Daily Carry Solutions. Hit that bell so that when I go ahead and upload content, you will be the first or among the first to know, okay? So uh, that being said, we'll start with number one. Uh, and this is a, a, a nod to my buddy Russell over at Artisan Cutlery and CJRB who actually came out with this particular knife. This is a CJRB Rhea. It's a very easy uh, to pronounce name. Uh, it's a nice natural G10 on this particular version. Although they, although they do come in different variants, um, this is one that I really like because natural G10 has that kind of jade look. And aside from that, you are able to go ahead and dye this a manner of different colors. So if you want something like a blue or a red or even a yellow or maybe an orange, something like that, just get yourself some red dye and, and uh, go ahead and go to town on this. This is very easy to go ahead and remove the scales and uh, it does have a deep carry clip which I really like and it is not tapped for uh, left-handed carry um, this particular version is 12 c27 steel uh, you're looking at a street price of approximately yeah I want to say like about $34 for this particular uh, set of variants in 12 c27 steel you are gonna pay a little bit more if you choose to get the upgraded version that is now available there are special editions of this knife in their proprietary ARPM 9 steel okay so consider that now overall length on this is gonna be six and three quarters uh, inches with a blade length of 2.875 and this uh, tips the scales just over two point two ounces okay it is out now and like i said uh for this particular variant which i recommend you know as just a cheap budget slicey knife with a nice uh you know lower end but still better than hcr 13 uh mov stainless steel you're looking to pay it about 34 dollars, and it is out now okay let me go ahead and put this to the side and uh, start with the next one. So that was Monday. So Tuesday, you wanna get a little bit fancier. You want something different. And uh, I figured I'd just go ahead and bring this guy back. Yes, that's right. This is the Civivi Lumi. Now you're probably wondering, 
how the hell I have one of these when as of the date of this video, it has not come out yet. Well, it's funny you mention that because while I was at Blade Show, I was able to pick up one of these. This is the Grey G10 version. They are gonna have a Micarta variant, but um, expect this to come out within the next few weeks to within the next few months. So prior to winter of this of this year, you know, 2021, you should see this come out. So this is a Justin Lundquist design. This particular one is Grey G10 with 14C28 on steel that may change upon production. So don't quote me on that. Uh, this is a hollow ground stone wash blade that is actuated via a front flipper. Now this front flipper is uh, very similar to that of the Wee Knife Eidolon, <clears throat> excuse me, and Justin's Baby Barlow designs, okay? The hollow grind is fantastic on this. Uh, usually you'll see like a full flat grind, but I know for a fact that with a hollow ground, you know, blade, you're gonna get a nice, nice slicer out of this and slice it does. Uh, it has a nice neutral handle, much like the uh, Rhea does, okay? Uh, and what I really enjoy about having a nice neutral handle is when you open it, which is, you know, very, very easy considering if you've opened a front flipper, you'll know how to open this. Um, the, the neutral handle allows you to be able to go ahead and use everything from the top to the bottom of the handle. And for me, even though this handle is not very big, you're looking at six inches overall for this knife, I can get four fingers on uh, comfortably on this scale, okay? Now, um, oh, on the handle. Now, uh, this Justin Lundquist design is still a prototype. This is the one that I picked up from Blade Show in 2021. And uh, while it's uh, just over six inches in, you know, overall length, uh, you're looking at just over two and a half inches for the blade itself. It's uh, 2.56. And this is going to run just over uh, two ounces. Uh, I didn't get an exact, uh, a breakdown with regards to the weight my scale broke uh, just when I was <laughs> setting this one up to be able to go ahead and weigh. Sorry about that guys. Um, if I find out exactly what it is, I'll go ahead and see if I can put it on the screen. But that being said, uh, this will be available in fall to winter of 2021 per my conversations with uh, the rep over at CJRB slash We Knife Company. And this is the Lumi from Civivi uh, made, designed by Justin Lundquist. So uh, on to Wednesday, okay. Now Wednesday, a little bit more expensive. This is hump day. Guys, we're gonna go ahead and check out the Goblin. Now the Goblin is a design from Concept Knives and uh, the person behind this, the, the person who actually put this particular design together and submitted it to Concept for release is a gentleman named Marshall Noble. Now. Um, this particular version, this is a, this has a titanium handle. This is all black or murdered out like, you know, they like to call it. Uh, this is a sheep's foot blade S35 EN steel. They do come in different variants, but this particular one is black on black. Um, this is an overall length of five and three quarters. So 5.75 inches with just over two and a quarter inch blade. You get about two inches of usable blade length, which is more than enough for a smaller knife that you're gonna be using in the office. And because of the fact that it has that nice uh, upgraded S35 BN steel, it is going to outperform uh, some of the knives that you saw before, uh, whether it's edge retention, corrosion resistance, or just overall usability. Um, I really like this because of the fact that not only is it a frame lock, which a lot of people really prefer, it does run on bearings like the other two, but it is a front flipper, okay, as you saw right there, or you can actually use that thumb hole to be able to actuate it. It is small, but you can use that very easily. I have thick medium-sized hands, and I am even, uh, even with these meaty, you know, paws, I am able to go ahead and actuate it. Now, um, as you can see, there is a cutout. It's not really a neutral handle, but it kind of is, and I'll show you why. Um, with the overall length being five and three quarters, it's, a, it's, I mean, it's the smallest one that we've seen to date, and I'm pretty sure it's going to be um, one of the smallest in this list. I think there's one that's a little bit smaller, but uh, with this size, Biggest concern is getting all of your fingers on the on the handle itself and not having to go ahead and have, you know, one or two fingers off here on the side. And what I'm able to do because of the fact that there is this kind of curve here and then there's a little bit more of a curve right here. I put my index finger here, middle finger, ring finger, and pinky, and I'm able to get all four right here. And as you can see, I get a nice purchase to be able to go ahead and, you know, 
work with the knife, do what I have to do. Works really well. And I don't know if you've noticed, a lot of these smaller knives, they do have uh, different deployment methods. I do like the fact that they have that, that finger flicking thumb hole, and then they do have this little notch on the top. That's very easy to go ahead and actuate using the front flip method with your thumb. Now, this also runs on bearings, but it is only tapped for uh, right hand carry. So consider that when you're looking at this particular knife. This does have titanium handles and it does have S35EN steel, like I said before. So the price is going to jump uh, from what was $34 initially with the Rhea and then the Lumi. It's going to be in Civivi pricing. So it's going to be less than 100 This one is going to go ahead and tip the scales at $100. Uh, in fact, this you're looking at a roundabout price of $140, depending on the options that you end up getting. This one in, in, this one in particular was about $140 and it is out now. So there were a couple of different variants in concept that I wanted to be able to use when it came to office uh, knives. And uh, you can use stuff like uh, Dirk Pinkerton's uh, The Little Main Street. That was actually one that you can use. Um, I know there was the Fusa, which is one that I actually uh, reviewed. Feel free to go ahead and check out that particular video. I'll see if I can leave it out uh, towards the end of this video. Uh, it's a non-locking knife that comes in a bunch of different materials. Uh, the one that I have is micarta. But this one, I feel it doesn't get a lot of attention and it's a really nice knife. I think that this is something that people are sleeping on. You really do need to check this out. It has a nice tip to be able to go ahead and use for, for piercing without having to break that tip. It doesn't have a weak tip. You have S35 again with that sheep's foot blade. And it's just a really nice knife. Um, I think that this is something that is slept on. And I think that the all black variant, if you're wearing nice black slacks, it's gonna disappear in the pocket. You're not gonna see it as you can see. It's not a shiny clip. So I think that this is something that you really should consider when you're looking for a knife. Uh, this is my hump day uh, pick for Office EDC. That is the Concept Goblin and black titanium s 35 and steel. Now, getting to Thursday, feeling a little bougie, you may have an office meeting with the board of directors or maybe your boss and you wanna come in looking fly. Well, guess what? ProTech has your back. And why is it ProTech? Because they have the Runt J5 for you to go ahead and check out. Now, this particular version has uh, milled black aluminum handles and a hand ground blade that has been mirror polished by Bank Irie. I picked this up at Blade Show. They only had 50 versions of this one. This is the Warncliffe version, and they also had a reverse Tonto, but I opted for the Warncliffe one. I just felt like the overall design element just meshed extremely well with this. This is called the J5 because there are previous runs in the series. In fact, if I recall correctly, and uh, I'm gonna see if I can get Matt from uh, ProTech or maybe somebody to confirm this, maybe in the comments. But if I recall correctly, the first knife that Dave uh, Wattenberg ever made in ProTech was uh, the runt. In fact, I think they're called the kitchen runs because he made them on and assembled them on his kitchen table at their home. So um, they brought the fifth generation version to Blade Show. Uh, they had a bunch of limited ver uh, releases. They had a flat scaled. They had the milled aluminum, which is what this one is, as you can see right here. It has the mother of pearl handle and has that beautiful finish and the grind by Mike Irie black deep carry pocket clip. I mean, just look at the knurling in the back. Let's see if I can get better focus there. There we go. And then just look at the knurling right there. It's just beautiful, you know? And of course, being that it is ProTech, which by the way, you can see, can you see that? There we go. You can see the name right there on the spine. And you can see the designation of the fact that it is limited. It is number 19 of 50. I mean, let's be real, even though it's small, you're gonna get that ProTech action and man, does it snap. So uh, this little guy is the smallest one on the list. This is just over five inches overall length. This is 5.13 inches. Uh, the blade is under two inches to be able to comply with uh, legal California carry for automatic knives. So this is 1.95 inches. So it's just under that two inch mark that allows it to be able to be legal and carryable in uh, California. And even though it's a small knife, it is extremely usable, I will tell you. Um, now. This is where things, you know, the, the facts are going to get kind of murky. You're going to see different facts on different pages, but I am going to go ahead and tell you what was confirmed to me by ProTech, okay? Now, the weird thing about this particular one is that this was a limited edition. However, the production versions, which are currently out, out now in both blue 
and black aluminum handles. Um, they come in 20 CV steel. That's equivalent to CTS 204P or M390 steel, as I'm sure a lot of you already know. You're not gonna have this grind, but you're gonna have a nice uh, uh, finish, and the grind is gonna be awesome on it. If not, reach out to them. Their customer service is beyond kick-ass. I do have to tell you that. Now, um, this particular version, like I said, uh, whether it's the uh, Reverse Tonto or the Warncliffe, this was sold at Blade Show as a limited series, but it's 154 CM. So you're getting an inferior steel on this one than the actual production version. Now, the interesting part about it is that if you were to pick this up when it was available, the table price on this was 240. That's what I actually paid for this knife. Now, don't tell my girlfriend because she's probably gonna kill me if she finds out about that. And in which case, if you don't see me happen to post after this, you'll know that she found out, please send help. Uh, you know, <laughs> let them know Daily Carry Solutions uh, is probably dead. <laughs> so if you are, are hearing this and I haven't posted in a few weeks, please send a search party out. So um, it's 240 for this particular knife in this particular fashion because it's the limited series, the hand ground and, and the mirror, uh, finished blade, the hand grind by uh, Mike Irie. Now, this particular version is going to run you 240. However, the 20 CV version with the standard handle, it does not have the, the mother of pearl uh, button and it's not going to have this finish. Uh, it, it does come in 20 CV and that one's actually only going to run you 140 bucks. So is it really worth getting this? Well, if you're a collector and you want to get something like this, yeah, they only made 50 of them and this was only sold at Blade Show. So the ones you see at the online retailers, it's because they went over to the booth and they picked them up. And they got there pretty fast because uh, let me tell you, this was one of the first tables I went to when I was at Blade Show and I asked the homie Matt, uh, which is uh, Cutting Edge Gear at Instagram. Uh, he actually works for uh, ProTech and he was at the booth and he was kind enough to put one of these aside. And the one he put to the side was number 19 of 50 in the Warncliffe design. And uh, I was able to pick it up. So like I said, $240 for this version, uh, which is probably gonna be like more like in the three or 400s, depending on when you see this on the uh, secondary market or the production version, which does come out in batches that you can get in black or blue. Uh, aluminum handles with the 20 CV steel, you're looking at about $140. It's still gonna have the same dimensions, so it's gonna be just under the two inch blade, that's 1.95 inches, uh, 5.13 overall, and I want to say, based on the you know the, the feel of the other knives that I've had on this table, this is just over two, uh, two I want to say maybe two, two and a half ounces. Uh, I don't have the exact weight. Again, uh, I just was going through this, and this is something that I would have considered for Thursday. Now, getting to Friday. Friday is typically casual Friday. It's typically payday, and the reason why I chose this one for payday is because this is the most expensive of the bunch, and it is the big boy of the bunch. So, um, this one is a shout out to uh, my Latin buddy Enrique Peña with the Peña Knives X-Series Raptor. Now, this is the jigged TI version, and um, this isn't one that you're gonna see around often because mostly the people that buy it, they keep it. He has a very loyal following. Um, you can actually go ahead and check out his um, his private Facebook page. He has, uh, I wanna say it's a, the X-Men Platoon or something like that. And there's people that make uh, custom scales for different variants of this particular knife. You cannot make scales for this one because this is a one piece scale on, on, on each side. So it's one piece here, one piece here, and then obviously the backspace is a different piece, but this does not come off. If it was the uh, my Carter version, you could take this off and you could go ahead and swap it with different versions or custom scales that um, they make and they sell via that page and sometimes on Instagram. So uh, the overall, um, length on this is 6.625 inches, okay? And you're looking at a 2.875 uh, inch blade. The blade itself is uh, M390. This is hollow ground, just like the Lumi. And uh, you have a beautiful, beautiful worn cliff. Uh, that's one of the reasons that actually drove me to this one. Plus the fact, and I'm sure you can see the trend here, uh, it has another neutral handle, okay? And when I say a neutral handle, you can see right here, can get all four well i mean it is significantly bigger but you are able to get all four fingers on here and uh it is indeed a front flipper so that you can use your your thumb but you can also use your index finger on this one because this flipper tab actually is angled such to where you can actually pick it up right here 
and just let it loose. I mean, this is a beautiful, beautiful uh, expression of his custom knife series. And uh, this was not executed by Wee Knife Company, who's usually the person that, you know, the, the go-to uh, manufacturer for, you know, a designer OEM production versions of their custom knives, if you will. Um, this is not a custom knife, but they sell in small batches. And because they are so, so hard to find, uh, when they do drops, typically you're gonna see something like this, whether it's the micarta, the titanium, any of the versions, they sell for about 274 when they drop. But they drop and then they go really, really quick. And then you see them flipped on say Reddit or eBay, or maybe one of the Facebook groups or something like that. And on the secondary, you're looking anywhere from 350 to 375, maybe even hinder prices like the four, 425. And it's kind of ridiculous, especially for a Chinese made uh, Riyadh knife that is not a custom. So, um, you know, think of that what you will. Now, uh, what's really interesting about this particular one um, is still, even though it's, it's pretty big, and it's the biggest one of these five. Uh, I chose this one here at the end because not only is it big, but it's actually light. This titanium version, um, and I'm not sure if the, the micarta versions are the same, but this one is a little bit over the two, uh, the two ounce as well. It's 2.35 ounces, which is still mega light for something like this and the usability that you're gonna get on this particular knife. The action is great. It also runs on bearings. This is a frame lock, just like the, uh, the Goblin that you saw earlier from Concept Knives. And um, like I said before, Riyadh is the one that um, is responsible for the OEM on this knife. So guys, I can't tell you enough. Uh, when it comes to Chinese made knives, there's always the argument that Chinese knives, you know, have you know, they, they skimp on the edges, you know, they skimp corners, they cut corners, that sort of thing. You're not gonna get that sort of thing with Wee Knife Company, and you're definitely not gonna get something like that with uh, Riyadh. So that's something that I really appreciate on this. Um, now, this is gonna run you about 274, like I said, and you're gonna see random drops. Sometimes it's Blade HQ, sometimes it's, you know, the Pena Knives website. Keep, keep an eye out and join the group if you ever wanna go ahead and pick up one of his knives. He's probably not gonna be uh, dropping this for a while, but if he does, keep that in mind, you're gonna pay about 274 for it. Now, one other thing to keep in mind, and this is something that is unique specifically to this particular knife on the list. If you're gonna take it apart, a T6 and a T8 is not gonna work on this particular knife. You're gonna end up stripping the uh, the screws on this and you're probably gonna strip your, uh, your tool. So keep your T6 and your T8 out of the picture when you're dealing with this knife. The ones you're gonna need are a T9 for the general screws and you're gonna need a T10 for the pivot. I've already tried this out. This will work on the pivot. This will work on the lock bar screw as well as the other screws on this knife. Do not use anything smaller because you are either gonna damage your bits or you're gonna damage these screws on the knife because these screws are actually kind of shallow. So you do wanna really be careful about that. But keep that in mind, if you're gonna use it, get yourself a T9 and a T10 or just happen to use the ones that come with the kit that you have. Hopefully you do have something that's a T6, T8, T9 and T10. So uh, that being said, this would be my uh, casual Friday or my Friday payday knife because it is the most expensive of the bunch, but this is a really, really great knife. So I'm gonna go ahead and take the rest of them out. Let me see here what I have. Uh, there's the Protec Runt right there. Uh, where are you going to here? There we go. Concept Goblin. All right. Uh, the uh, Lumi. And the CJRB Ria. Okay, and there you have it folks. These are uh, five knives that I chose for this particular uh, Office EDC series. They are going to go ahead and fit almost every budget. You're looking at anywhere from $34 to damn near $300. So it's 274, about 240 or 149, you know, 134 uh, city, you could be anywhere from, you know, 50 to 80 let's say, and then um, the uh, RIA is gonna run you from $34 on up, probably within the category of the Civili knife. But any of these is going to serve you extremely, extremely well if you have a uh, small uh, knife syndrome <laughs> and you wanna go ahead and use something small to be able to use your uh, knife for EDC activities. Maybe you have an HI that's a pain in the butt and they're gonna think that when you carry your normal knife, you know, that you're going to go ahead and shoot up the place with an AR-15 and you're gonna become an issue, you know, and a liability at your job. Personally, me, when I'm in the office, I like using something like this, but I will use something a little bit bigger. 
And just as kind of a bonus to these, uh, I do have another one I'm gonna show. And this one right here is a prototype that was sent to me up just under two years ago. Uh, this is a Carlos Elsner knife. This is the Clutch from Kaiser. This has end cut carbon fiber, which is extremely beautiful with a titanium. That Those are inlays in a titanium uh, slab right here, the titanium frame on both sides. It does have a little bit of a, a bolster slash frame lock. It is tapped for only right hand carry, S35VN steel on the blade. Great belly on this uh, sheep's foot. This is a flipper knife, which is different from most of the knives that are on here, but extremely smooth. They do make a micarta variant as well. And the cool thing about the micarta variant is if you look at the clip side, right under here, they have a little circle that's actually been sanded out and smoothed out. So it's a lot easier to be able to go ahead and uh, put the, the, the knife into your pocket and slip it right back out when you have to go ahead and deploy it. So this is actually the knife that I'm carrying today. This is a great steakhouse knife. And honestly, if you wanna get away with a slightly bigger knife, you can go ahead and choose this one. But that being said, um, this is dragging on the video a little bit more. I'm gonna go ahead and end it here. You would be remiss if you didn't have any of these and you were looking to get one. If you're on the fence with any of these, just do know that these are the kind of knives that I'm gonna be carrying now that I'm able to go back into the office. Uh, they are finally opening up the offices soon, supposedly, uh, that uh, they are allowing us to be able to go back in. And when we go back in, I'm gonna probably carry uh, each one of these and probably this one as well, because I can probably get away with it. Um, HR really does mess with me. And if they happen to be around, I'll just take this one out too because I carry this just in case. You know, kind of throw them off so that they don't know I have these little slices here. Um, now, thank you so much for uh, watching up until this point. If you do watch until this point, you truly are part of the DCS crew and you deserve a DCS stamp of approval. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, be sure to go ahead and check out some of my other videos that I'm gonna go ahead and post right here. Um, I will go ahead and post some information on the Lumi and maybe just a, you know one of these other knives uh, that I have available, maybe my visit to the ProTech booth, we'll see. Uh, that being said, thank you so much. Feel free to reach out to me at Instagram at Daily Care Solutions if you have any questions about these knives or you want additional details. And just remember, if you EDC, think of DCS. You guys have been great. I'll see you next time. Peace.